Ancient Europe was a house of horrors. That is the gruesome truth about early Europeans. One of the most shocking finds it that our potential ancestors lived in a state of astonishing savageness. While many anthropologists will tell you we don't really know who our common ancestor was, others will say we do. The species Homo heidelbergensis, or something like it. An even smaller portion will point to another possibility, a controversial species called Homo antecessor. Homo antecessor is a contentious species designation. Some researchers believe these are members of an early and variable Homo heidelbergensis population. Yet its discoverers believe that it shares more traits with modern humans than European Homo heidelbergensis, so Homo antecessor is considered the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens by some. In this scenario, Homo heidelbergensis is not on the branch to modern humans, but rather a side branch. Homo heidelbergensis is also considered by some to be an archaic subspecies of Homo sapiens, called Homo sapiens heidelbergensis. The fossils were classified as a new species, Homo antecessor, due to their unique combination of modern and primitive traits. These hominins lived in Iberia between 1.2 million and 800,000 years ago, during a time that has been linked to a population bottleneck where only some 1,230 individuals survived to pass on their genes to modern humans. So this group of hominins apparently survived that bottleneck. Around 900,000 years ago, there was a shift from 40,000-year glacial cycles to 100,000-year cycles, leading to longer and stronger glaciations in Europe known as the Cromerian Glacial Period. Recently, researchers expanded the timeline of the species. At another cave site in Spain, known as Cima del Elefante, scientists unearthed a partial lower jaw, as well as a few dozen stone tools, dating to about 1.2 million years ago. Outside of Spain, the only other potential evidence of Homo antecessor fossils are stone tools and footprints found at a nearly 900,000-year-old English archaeological site named Happisburg that might have been made by them. Think about that. 900,000 years. While working at the Grandolina site, a group of Spanish researchers discovered 80 fossils belonging to six individuals who lived approximately 800,000 years ago. The hominids' teeth were primitive, similar to those of Homo erectus, but some aspects of their faces were surprisingly modern, resembling those of modern humans. Indeed, some say the face is strikingly comparable to that of modern humans rather than other archaic humans, particularly in its general flatness and the bending of the cheekbone as it merges into the upper jaw, though these features are only known from a juvenile example. The brain cavity is estimated to hold 16,000 grains of water, whence its cubical contents may be estimated to have been approximately 1,000 cubic centimetres. Estimated in dried millet seed, the contents equal 31 ounces in British Apothecary's weight, but no whole brain case has been found, so these are rough guesstimates. Nonetheless, this size falls within the lower range of variation for modern human females. Homo antecessor may have been broad-chested and heavy like Neanderthals, but its arms were proportionally long, a characteristic more common in tropical or subtropical human populations. The kneecaps are narrow and have underdeveloped tendon attachments, and the feet show that Homo antecessor walked less efficiently than modern humans. As discussed, the species displayed a relatively flat mid-face, a projecting nose, traits seen in Homo sapiens but not in Neanderthals or Homo heidelbergensis. It also retained several other primitive characteristics, such as a relatively thick brow ridge, a receding forehead, and a robust lower jaw. These mixed traits suggest that Homo antecessor occupied an intermediate evolutionary position, bridging the gap between earlier hominins like Homo erectus and later species such as Homo sapiens. The physical features of Homo antecessor have left anthropologists puzzling over its relationships with other early humans. It has big teeth, as do more primitive members of our genus such as Homo erectus, but as stated, its face shape is remarkably similar to that of modern humans. Some have argued it could be the last common ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans and Homo sapiens. Others argue it is actually a branch of Homo erectus. In evolutionary biology, understanding the distinction between basal and derived traits is crucial for reconstructing phylogenetic relationships and tracing the evolutionary history of species, including humans.
Basal traits are characteristics inherited from a common ancestor that have remained relatively unchanged over time. In humans, an example of a basal trait is a large brow ridge and elongated skull. Derived traits are those that have evolved more recently and differ from the ancestral condition. In humans, a rounded brain case and smaller brow ridge are examples. Another example is the development of a large brain relative to body size, which is a significant departure from the ancestral state. The transition from basal Homo sapiens to derived Homo sapiens is known as sapienization, while this transition in Neanderthals is known as Neanderthalization. Given the evidence for an early divergence, some anthropologists propose that modern humans are not a distinct new species, but rather a derived version of archaic Homo sapiens that existed at least 850,000 years ago. This challenges the idea of a linear progression from archaic to modern humans, and instead suggests a model of continuous evolution with overlapping populations. If the Neanderthal sapien split occurred around 800,000 years ago, then a basal form of Homo sapiens must have existed at that time, making modern humans a derived version of an older lineage. This challenges traditional models of human evolution and suggests a more intricate scenario involving multiple hominin populations that interbred and evolved over time. As new fossil and genetic discoveries emerge, our understanding of human origins will continue to evolve, reshaping the way we view our ancient past. By comparing Homo antecessor proteins to those of other hominins, researchers discovered that the species was closely related to modern humans' last common ancestors, Neanderthals and Denisovans. Whatever the case, Homo antecessor is likely a more accurate representation of the last common ancestor than Homo heidelbergensis. The last common ancestor must have had a face similar to Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor. In other words, the modern-looking face of Homo antecessor is actually ancient, and our species has preserved it, whereas Neanderthals' faces have changed more during their evolution. One of the main points of contention in human evolutionary studies is whether Homo antecessor represents the last common ancestor of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, or whether it was merely a closely related sister lineage. Traditional models suggested that Homo heidelbergensis was the common ancestor of these species, but recent genetic and fossil evidence challenges this view. Genetic evidence suggests the last common ancestor lived about 800,000 years ago, so African Homo heidelbergensis or Homo rhodesiensis is too recent. We reassess this as a separate line of evolution, but one which probably coexisted with the evolution of Homo sapiens, says Chris Stringer. This shows there were many different hominins stomping around 500,000 years ago. Stringer also has stated that we don't know where the last common ancestor lived. It could have been in Asia, it could have been in Africa, or it could have been in Europe. So what does this mean? This means that Homo heidelbergensis did not simply evolve into modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans, though it is theoretically possible that a single small Homo heidelbergensis population living around 800,000 years ago was the common ancestor of the later humans. But there's an alternative. In this light and in recognition of the fossil record of Homo erectus, the findings are consistent with the origin of a branch that arose within a diversifying Asian Homo erectus population which diverged into the westward-going population of Homo antecessor, which came to reside for a short period in southwest Europa, and another population that split later into Homo sapiens and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. In this scenario, the results are consistent with the paleontologically established presence of Homo erectus in Eurasia, and a Eurasian divergence between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor 850,000 years ago. This means that the last common ancestor was living in Eurasia, to put it in simple terms. Nevertheless, the evolutionary relationship between Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens remains one of the most debated topics in paleoanthropology. Another study explores the implications of Homo antecessor's facial morphology and genetics while addressing the theory that Neanderthals diverged from modern humans around 800,000 years ago, making modern Homo sapiens a derived version of archaic humans. As discussed, 
Recent genetic and morphological evidence suggests that Homo antecessor is closely related to the last common ancestor, yet whether it directly evolved into Homo sapiens remains uncertain. Recent advances in paleoproteomics, the study of ancient proteins, have provided insights into the evolutionary relationships of Homo antecessor. A study analyzing proteins extracted from a Homo antecessor tooth suggested that it was closely related to the last common ancestor of modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans. However, researchers could not confirm whether it was the actual last common ancestor or a sister lineage that shared a close evolutionary relationship with this ancestor. Nevertheless, this findings further challenges the long-held assumption that Homo heidelbergensis was the common ancestor. Instead, it supports the possibility that Homo antecessor played a critical role in human evolution. If Homo antecessor was not directly ancestral to modern humans, then it suggests an evolutionary tree with multiple branches, some of which went extinct while others led to modern human populations. At risk of sounding repetitive, a key question in human evolution is when Neanderthals and modern humans last shared a common ancestor. Traditionally, the split was estimated to have occurred around 500,000 years ago, but more recent studies suggest an earlier divergence of approximately 800,000 years ago or even 1 million years ago. This has significant implications for the role of Homo antecessor in our lineage. If Neanderthals and modern humans split around 800,000 years ago, it implies that a basal form of Homo sapiens already existed at that time. This would mean that rather than emerging suddenly, modern humans evolved gradually from a more archaic population. Some researchers argue that the ancestor of both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens must have already been present before 800,000 years ago, potentially within Homo antecessor or a closely related species. The settlement of the European continent is a passionate topic. The samples show a large amount of variability, but once the Neanderthal morphology pattern is achieved, then a lower level of variation is observed. There are many questions to solve. Was the variation a consequence of several events of first bottlenecking and then hybridization, or both? What was the scale of such events, wide or local? Ponder on that for a moment. As mentioned, one of the most shocking finds was that these early humans lived in a state of astonishing savageness. Their race appears to have been voracious cannibals with a particular appetite for children. Possibly they were driven to this level of barbarism by sheer hunger during times of extreme cold, or they were addicted to cannibalism. Alas, we can only speculate. The drastic climatic changes can probably explain scenarios of isolation of some of the populations, the extinction of many, and the hybridization of the remaining. If Homo antecessor was not the direct ancestor of modern humans but a sister lineage, it implies that human evolution was far more complex than previously thought. Instead of a single lineage leading neatly to Homo sapiens, multiple hominin groups coexisted, interbred, and contributed to the genetic diversity of later human populations. Thus, the relationship between Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens remains unresolved, but recent evidence suggests that Homo antecessor was closely related to, but not necessarily the direct ancestor of, modern humans. Its combination of modern and archaic traits places it in a pivotal position in human evolution, potentially representing an early offshoot or a sister lineage to the common ancestor of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and Denisovans. But many anthropologists are not on board with this because of the fragmentary nature of the Homo antecessor fossils, many of which are only teeth and small bone fragments. Another problem is that most of the known Homo antecessor specimens represent children, who, by the way, were apparently the victims of human flesh eaters and their bones thrown down a cave shaft. Only two of the six individuals found at Grandolina are thought to be adults, both females about 20 years old, while the rest are children. The most complete skull is from a six-year-old boy, according to proteins found in his teeth. Because most of the features tying Homo antecessor to modern people were found in juveniles, whose bodies and physical features change as they grow up and go through puberty. So it's possible that Homo antecessor adults didn't really look much like Homo sapiens at all. And if that's the case, 
then it's hard to argue the species had an ancestor-descendant relationship with us. The issue won't be settled until researchers find good examples of complete adult Homo antecessor fossils and sequence their full genomes. Thanks for watching, and please check out our other videos. Geneticists estimate that we had a common ancestor with the Neanderthal lineage probably more than 500,000 years ago. But who that ancestor was and where that ancestor lived, I think now is, is much less certain than I used to think. I used to think the common ancestor was a species called Homo heidelbergensis. Um, and now I'm, I'm not sure about that. And I'm not sure what continent that common ancestor lived on. It may have been in Europe. It may have been in Asia. It, it may have been in Africa.